We're gonna take a death-defying journey. <laughs> uh, we're gonna cruise out to the border between Maryland and PA and do what I call a cross-border run. Run for the border, whatever you want to call it. Right now, I'm, I'm as much testing my microphone's effectiveness against all this noise at 65 miles an hour as anything else. We're gonna take uh, 95 up to, I don't know, something, maybe 175. And take that over to 29 and take 29 to 99, which is Old Frederick Road. And then we're gonna take uh, the back part of Old Court. I forgot the name of it, it starts with a W. Uh, take that into uh, Timonium. I believe it's called north part of uh, Baltimore City. Then we're going to take 146 or something like that out to 152, out to a road called Madonna Road. I've been out here a few times. I actually drove out there by accident the other day. And uh, then take 32 all the way out there, but it's going to mean that we miss riding on 95, which we love to ride on. So much fun. And um, that would mean we'd have to come back down 99 to get to whatever the hell the name of the road is. Anyway, I forgot the name of the road. We're going to go out like 100 or something to take it to... Uh, going to do a little highway riding just because it's not fair to get on a motorcycle and not ride it on the highway with all this traffic. Now today has been a weird day because as far as I could tell if you ask me the city is pretty much empty today. Um, I think a lot of people have gone to the beach So there isn't, there really isn't that much traffic around town, but it seems like there's a fair amount of traffic on 95. So what we're going to do is we're going to ride 95 here just for a little bit, just to get an idea of what riding it is like, you know, just to compare and contrast it. But we really don't want to ride 95. We didn't come out here to ride 95. But the fact of the matter is you kind of have to do some real highway riding if you really want to get anywhere on a bike. And I just wanted to get an idea of what this bike is like on the highway. We'll take 175. It's long enough. I just I just don't like riding in all this traffic. Four lanes of traffic. This bike is really a handful on the highway. It really doesn't want to center right. Doesn't want to track right. And you never know at any moment when somebody riding all this traffic and somebody can come flying over and try to pickle you essentially by trying to make a turn at the last second and it really sucks I've seen that happen too many times it's just too fucking much of a nightmare so we're gonna avoid that and what I'm saying is that is a major hindrance if you don't ride a bike on the highway, it's a major hindrance because you... Uh, there's just a light here. You know, there's a light here. If I did know it, I know it now. <laughs> so, um... You know, the little things, little things about riding a bike that are different than riding a car. That's one of them. You, you know, you really can't do your braking and turning at the same time, which is something you take for granted in the car, you know. There's almost nothing you can do to lock up the front wheels, except panic, even if you panic brake, really kind of doesn't lock up the front wheel. But on a bike, it's so much easier, you really have to be ultra careful not to lock up the front wheel when you're braking. So you fans of ABS can, you know, take that. But my thing is, I don't like to ride right up behind people. I don't know if you're not riding the center lane, and I don't have a problem with that. I'll ride right here. 
center lane, right lane, I'm fine. So anyway, let's get a little farther up, take some more video. We'll get up here, this is gonna get us to 29 in a little bit. It's gonna be very calm and very boring. Think of after beach traffic here. I don't think it's like one o'clock, I'm not sure. My clock, of course, is not set right on my bike. Ooh, probably about one o'clock. So everybody's coming back from the beach today on Sunday. And I would take this, I rarely take this road because it usually, and this is why, because it has so many lights on it. But really, it's just because I really take it anyway, because I usually take other roads. So that's one reason why I took it. Experimentation. Roadless travel and all that good shit. Basically try something different. So ABS, will it become the must-have hit and traction control? I think it probably will. I don't see why why it shouldn't now that they seem to have gotten most of the bugs out of it. Uh, oh, Aprilia. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Aprilia seems to have gotten the shortest braking distance. I'm still kind of confused why KTM has such awful zero to 60 braking distances on their bike. Uh, but, like I said, not surprised their bikes don't seem to be really all that well worked out. They still have, you know, a little roughness around the edges. That's one of them. So anyway, we're heading on to 29 and about another five minutes we'll be up to 99. So we'll pick this up in a minute. Ooh. And you'll see why I call this the ride of death in about half an hour or so. We'll see. Come on, buddy. All right. Come off the end of 29. Approach the end of... where it hits 70. We got a little bit ways to go here. And then we take our left here. Okay, we've got a green light and everything. We won't make it. it sucks. All right, so I think I, I just drove about 20 miles to get here. Already down at ha under half a tank. <laughs> we got quite a ways to go. You know, I have to get gas at least once more. So that's the whole thing I'm working on. What I'm working on here is the whole idea. What bike should I get? As if I get another bike, should I get a leader bike or should I get a 600 or 750, something like that? I'm trying to figure it out right now. I got a couple of things going on. I looked. I followed up on the whole thing about uh, miles per gallon versus displacement, miles per gallon versus, um, let's see, uh, HP per liter, bike weight, all that good stuff. And I found that there are really weak trends. You know, the, the thing is that there actually have been a couple of outliers. Uh, like the FC07 has very high gas mileage for its displacement. Um, some of the newer bikes, I think the FC9 also, um, but most bikes, there's a very weak trend uh, between weight and MPG, displacement and MPG, even horsepower per liter per MPG. Uh, I think it's obvious when a bike doesn't really get good gas mileage, and the outliers are certainly obvious. You know, like my bike, uh, 12R doesn't really get good gas mileage. Gets about 30 miles to the gallon. Uh, the um, Panigale 1200, you know, 1199, 1299, get uh, 30, 27 miles to the gallon. Um, but on the other hand, you don't see this great increase in MPG from bikes just because you reduce the engine performance and the engine size even, or even the bike weight. You don't see this giant increase. 
My FJ got 45 miles a gallon and that, that thing was a tank. It was 650, 650 pound bike, carbureted, and uh, it got 45 miles a gallon. Um, that was one of the great things about that bike relative to my car is I could hop on that bike and ride it, you know, for 50% less money than it would cost me to ride the car, at least in terms of gas. Now, certainly, um, I'd pay more for tires, and I had to do the oil change more frequently, and oil was twice as expensive per quart. So it, it, it you know, it, it definitely didn't uh, equate to a savings, but what it did equate to was essentially driving my car but putting half the mileage on it. Um, I didn't have to worry about a bike that was more expensive to maintain in my car and it got the same gas mileage. So, um, one of the other problems that I have uh, tried to address is the size and weight of the bike. Now certainly uh, this bike, while much lighter than my FJ1200, is, is still 550 pounds. It's still a little bit heavier than I would like it to be. And it doesn't really, really make sense. It's not like a, a slam dunk in logic to ride a bike that does 100, that can do 190 miles an hour. And the most I ride it is 80, 90 miles an hour on a highway at the most. Even if the power is really easy and I like it and I like the way it comes on, it's all nice and good. And you have um, an abundance of power and I like to have that. I don't have to worry about, like right now I'm riding a 3500 RPM, I don't have to worry about revving the crap out of it to get it going um, at a reasonable speed. So, um, and as long as I keep the res about 3000 is happy, you know. I could run it lower, but you know, I don't want to abuse the privilege. So yes, okay, let's talk about a 600 then, maybe, if not a 300 or a 400, if the KTM 400 is a little bit too small. Let's talk about a 600. So I'm looking at the KTM 690 and the Gixxer 750 uh, GSXR, you know, and I'm saying, they're both probably fast enough for the road, the type of riding that I normally do. And if there are two bikes that are gonna get the best gas mileage of that class, it would be somewhere in that range. The um, FC750, or sorry, the FC6R, only gets about 45 miles, 40 miles a gallon. So it's not like a really, would stop to old course. It's not like a really efficient bike. I'm not sure what the uh, the Duke 690 gets. Come on, dude. Will you go through the fucking turn? Do you believe that guy stopped right there? Jesus. Because he wanted some ice cream. All right, so um, now we'll deal with this. You see those storm clouds up there, man. God damn it, every time. Yesterday it was like perfect, absolutely perfect. It was 75 degrees, nice puffy white clouds, and again today we're riding into the damn storm. I mean, there's, there's no question that's rain up there. We're gonna have to cross it. I just checked my radar and it was nothing. So, uh, anyway, let me finish the story. So. Um, we get, we, we don't see much better than 55 miles to the gallon out of anything. I mean, even like these, ah, shit. even these 300s, 400s, you don't see really great gas mileage. Okay, this road is a little bit heinous right through here. Um, I do a lot of brake riding. One thing I see if I go ride in Pennsylvania, you see these roads like this, where you see like that little bit of bevel on the side. Some of those roads, it's like a giant fucking, it's like a, a, a M1 tank came down there and just ruined the side of the road. Um, 
behind me. This is a nice bar. This is a great bar. A really nice uh, bar, good beer, and the waitresses are really nice. So um, I would definitely recommend checking it out if you have a chance to go in there. Uh, so anyway, this bike just doesn't want it. I have to admit it, it, it is a bit of a pain to get it to turn. It really is. It does not like just go, ooh, I'll just turn. You, you really have to manhandle it. Um, so, I'm in the process of relearning how to turn it. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I'm not going very fast here. And, uh, well, the other reason is because there's some of these blind corners with gravel on top. Always nice. So, um, right, so you don't see many, many uh, bikes with gas mileage better than 55 miles a gallon. It, it doesn't matter how small the displacement is, you know, Getting better than 60 miles to the gallon is, is not really on the, in the cards, with rare exceptions. Now, I'm not going to say that there aren't any, because I know the Hondas get some ridiculous miles per gallon, like 75, 80 miles per gallon. But don't think that you're going to buy a small bike and it's going to get really great gas mileage. You'll be lucky if it gets 60 miles to the gallon. Now, admittedly, that's a big advantage over 80, oh no, over, over 30, Certainly over 25. So nothing to sneeze at, okay? But you're giving up a lot of power to get that miles per gallon. A lot of power over a 1200. But see, one of the advantages I can ride this bike. I'm, I'm, I'm down at 3500 RPMs. I'm not worried about racing the hell out of the engine. It's got plenty of power. All I do is just literally just a slight twist of the wrist, and I'm rock and rolling out of these turns. And uh, I guess what I'll have to do is I'll have to have someone on a smaller bike, much smaller bike, come through here and, and uh, you know, show me how it's done on a small bike. So I, I don't know if I have enough uh, battery, or I certainly have enough storage, but not enough battery to know if I um, can record and what did you do that for? Did he think I was pushing him? Did he think I was pushing him? <laughs> That's funny. Um, I don't have enough battery to record a whole trip, and it would be like, you know, the trip I'm going to take today is two hours uh, out there, probably out to where I'm going to stop and turn around and come back, which is uh, somewhere near Red Lion, Pennsylvania. But um, I took this ride on my on my car a couple weekends ago or last week, and I can't remember. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And I've been on this road many times, but I never quite took it all the way out into the middle of nowhere. Um, and then this time, the last time I took it out to 95, took 95 up to 156, and then went up north from there. And today I'm just going to try to cut through the, uh, the reservoir on 142 and see if I can find one, 156 or whatever it is. Uh, which I know I, I've done that before also. But the other advantage of doing this is I don't have to ride out to Virginia, which is a huge pain in the ass. I don't have to ride all the way out 66 to get to like the Shenandoahs, which is a huge pain in the ass. I'm gonna have to ride south on 95, which is a huge pain in the ass, just to get, you know, to some of these. There are plenty of roads up here that are good roads to ride on. And I always tack on the caveat, any road is a good road to ride on it if you ride on it too fast. <laughs> you know, you can, you can have fun on just about any damn road in the universe as if you're gonna ride it too quickly. And, uh, so that kind of gets me back to another point, and it kind of closes the circle. 
Why do we take the risk to ride motorcycles in the first place? And I think that we have to admit, in the end, it is because we want the risk. We, we want that excitement. If it was safe, we would have no interest in it. If, if it was safe, there would be no ego boost from riding motorcycles. If it was safe, there wouldn't be any thrill in it. And I think, you know, like, I know, look at that shit up there. I know I'm heading into the rain here. I, the road I'm trying to ride on is insane, but I want to ride it because I saw a guy take his wife up on a gold wing when I was up here. I mean, you can't beat that for picture, for, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, picturesqueness. Tobacco, coming over the hill. Little corn, late season corn. Ooh. Off Camber Road. That guy pulled over to let me go through. I, I'm one of the slowest riders in the history of mankind, and he pulled over to let me go. Um, any case, so we're coming into, uh, I guess I don't say Old Court, but we're in Old Court Mall here any second. And I'll pick this up when we cross uh, through Timonium or go through Timonium or something like that. We'll see. And it's like where and when. We'll see if we can like try to avoid it. Kind of riding out of the hood here into the northern part of this wacky city right around Old Court. And we're going to pass this golf course up here. I need to come and check out one day. Now this is another half an hour ride to ride out Old Court to Joppa and then take Joppa on, you know, Joppa Road to the uh, 95 or whatever you want to take, the 95 North. And I, that's how I did it the last time. I took 95 North off of Joppa Road or Route 40 and then took that up to um, 156 and went up through Edgewater, I guess it is. And that took a while, so... We're not going to do that. We're going to go straight through the reservoir. I okay, just cut me off. It's just the same thing this old lady did the last time I drove, rode my bike up here. She just cut right the fuck off in that turn. Now, let's see if we can do this and try not to get too fucking wet. Because, man, this is... Oh, we got to go through this light and make a right. Okay. Park Heights. This old bat making that turn. She cut me dead ass off. Anyway. Scenic Park, north of Park uh, Park Heights, and this is this turned out to be pretty twisty, also. So again, more proof of the fact that if you want to come out here, ride like an idiot, and kill yourself. You don't really need to go way out in the middle of nowhere to do it. Probably gonna hold this guy. Up. He's not too far behind me. See, like I could come barreling down here. I am expecting the road to start getting slippery and wet here any second. That's the other part of it. As it first drops, hopefully I'm hoping I see it before I hit it. Guarantee you it's going to start raining up here. It's just a question of when. Pull over and let these guys go through. So I can't, I can't afford to go racing up here. I just can't do it. That was crazy. Anybody could have come around that corner and hit me, but I'd missed my turn there at the entrance. It just wasn't worth the risk. Just try to get that over with as soon as possible. Um, all right, so, see, this is, this is another thing, another difference between bikes and cars. You don't have 
the luxury of waiting until you get on wet roads to begin to slow down. You need to slow down before you get to the water. You know it's going to rain. You don't want to be on a twisty road like this doing 50 miles an hour and then all of a sudden hit water. So you got to ease into it. And this guy pulled right out in front of me anyway. You know, I was like, fuck it. I fine. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Would you like to make my case for me, sir? Thank you. Ah, man. Chicken egg, okay, but still, you know, who's to say he would have seen me if I was going much faster before he pulled out? You just, you just don't know. Um, so, uh, it looks like we might be able to slip through here without getting wet, because I see pink on the other side, which is a good sign. Uh, that means the sun's out there. There's definitely a I don't know, that's kind of ugly up there. Wait, no reason to wait at the light here. I've got too much to record. I want to record this. I want to record that, record the other stuff, so... We'll see. Last time I was able, I got, I got, somehow got oodles, oodles and oodles more video than I thought I was going to get out of this camera, so let's see. Um... I just want to record the moment of my, uh, shock and horror when I'm sliding down some of these roads up in Pennsylvania. You'll see what I'm really got to save some video for that. I really want to. This is all nice, but it's pretty straightforward. Now, I'm riding through Baltimore right now, okay? I'm, I just saw 695 to the north. We're approaching 83. Like I said, you don't have to go flying way out of the city to find something to ride that's interesting. You just need to know the city well enough to find it. And I... I've certainly found enough interesting roads to ride on in just about every place I've gone uh, over the summer, over the last six or seven months, since I've started really looking for roads to ride, look at the gravel here, roading, roads to ride on besides going way out in the mountains. I just going out in the Shenandoahs. 4,000 RPM, folks. Let's make that turn. This is for Wes Siler, who said that bike can't turn. 5,000 RPMs, and the train is running, buddy. See, you don't have to, you don't have to go real fast to make it interesting. <laughs> nice Viper. You just have to go kind of fast. But there's a time and a place. You don't want to come whipping down in the intersections like this, doing 60 miles an hour, okay? There is a time and a place for everything. South 83. Now that wouldn't be bad. We could take that. And that would be an interesting ride. Right there. Have to go in the wrong way. But I have to remember that goes on 83. I didn't know that. So, um, I would cross 83. That's the north direction, 83, so we'll take Old Court a little bit further. Now, this is going to be pretty much more the same, so... Ugh. So, as nice as it is, we're not going to record this, so... Summarizing... Just about any place you go riding on could be fun if you ride it too fast. But the major thing is we're looking for thrills. We're looking for rate for danger. That's why we ride motorcycles. To say that we ride because, you know, we just want to go out and see the scenery is, is nonsense. You've got to see the scenery in a car or a truck or an SUV or, or even a motorhome. We ride motorcycles because we like thrills, danger, fear, excitement. Especially if you can barely ride, and we ride motorcycles. Um, so let's uh, let's get back to talking about 
MPG and bikes and, and touring bikes and stuff. All right, so if you, if you take the premise that a Ninja CX-12R is a little bit too much bike for a touring bike, unless you're gonna ride at 85 miles an hour and 100, 120 miles an hour all day long, you're right through the Pyrenees at 100 miles an hour all day long. And even then, I still don't think it would be really great. I think the, the real problem with it is, this is Joppa, the real problem with it is, is that the miles per gallon is just, you know, not great, even, you know, in a Busa, gets about five more miles a gallon. 14R is about the same, and a pound of gallon is worse. Uh, the BMW, I suspect, is probably, well, they say it's the same, but I would suspect it's slightly worse. Now, where are we? Let's just take this road, just see where it goes. I know where that goes. That goes into, well, I know where it goes, let's see. It goes to Timonium. I take this road. Did you see? I didn't see shit for a turn signal. Not shit. I saw the brakes, and that's it. Like I said, you got to give these guys space. You can. The, the easiest way to get yourself killed by a car is to ride close to one. Alright, so we're going to take Thornton here, which is going to go probably a little bit north, as opposed to straight to Timonium. And I'm going to hope that it crosses uh, either 695 or something. We'll basically see if we can get over onto... Um, could have done it right there. That, that's probably 83 right there. Um, so we can get over onto the north side of, or the east side of 83, and then find 146. Now, I just made it much more difficult by doing this. Ugh. So let me stop recording until I get somewhere. Oh, what was I going to say? All right, I'll finish this train of thought. Um, what bike do you get if the perfect bike is not the perfect bike because it's perhaps slightly too heavy and perhaps doesn't quite get enough miles per gallon? Well, you run into a couple of problems. The first one is, why the hell do you not ride a bike around wasting money if you have a hard time paying for gas uh, and a motorcycle at the same time? Uh, and that's the argument that people have about people who don't want to wear gear. Why are you out riding a motorcycle if you can't afford to buy gear? You know, it's just not a bright idea. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the gear issue alone for the time being. Now, if you're going to make the right turn, make the right turn. Don't just put your turn signals on and then not go right. Come on! Fuck. Dog gears! Do all motorcycles have dog gears? I don't know. I know the R1, the original R1 had dog gears. Why is Kawasaki making such a big deal out of the fact that the H2 and H2R have dog gears when just about every bike with sequential gears has dog gears? I don't know. Anyway, um, so we have to cross over 695, so we have to come over this way since we can't get on the highway now. It's always a trick to get over 695 once you get stuck on the wrong side. So I'm taking advantage of this opportunity. It's 83 still. Is that 83 south? It sure looked like it. Ugh. I've done enough demos around here to know that you really don't want to waste an opportunity to get past. <laughs> 83 or, or 695 once you get on the northwest side of the city. Uh, so now we have another problem. Is how to, okay. Front Avenue. Oh, Jesus freaking Christ. Jesus freaking... That guy is right under it. Do you believe that? 
the genius that is this gentleman is right under that train. All right, so that's, I don't know what they call that, the light rail, I guess. He stopped <laughs> perfectly so the thing would come right down on top of him. All right, College Manor. So we must be getting close to Timonium and uh, Towson, I guess it's Towson, but whatever. Towson Community College. Uh, Seminary Road. Freak Avenue. I would guess that goes somewhere I want to go. St. John's. See, some of, so, there's no question that some parts of Baltimore are really nice. I mean, really nice. And I, I have, I had, I had to re-evaluate my opinion of Baltimore as a result. Ah, eh, fuck. Let's go this way. Ah, eh, fuck. I'm gonna get killed going this way. <laughs> I saw a large Jeep about to pass me on the right. And I said, no. <laughs> Let's not do that. Law number three, sudden moves on motorcycles will get you killed. Oh, man. Law number four, do not panic brake. No matter how much of a danger you think you're in, squeeze the brakes as normal, slow down at a reasonable pace. All right, so now we are in New York, and which way do we go? I don't know. I really don't know. Let me figure this out here. I really don't know. I mean, we could go north or south. Oh, there it is, north and south. How about that? So, we want to go north, and we want to get on 83, I guess, and get on the, the fucking road we're trying to get on and be done with it. Let's see here. There's two near calamities. Shit. Let's go get on the highway and ride in the rain. Woo, boy. I'm making a hell of a video now, aren't I? All right, let's let's pick this up when we get down on on uh, 145. I, I I swear to God, every time I get on this bike. I love riding this bike. I love it. I just keep being over impressed by how much fun it is to ride this bike. <laughs> There's some kind of fair going on here, Timonium Fairgrounds. A massive fair, but we're gonna wheelie up after we not gonna wheelie past it, but we're definitely gonna keep going. Oh, it was Ag Day yesterday down at a Manassas. Uh, Woodbridge had this agricultural fair that I rolled by in the many hours it took me to get down to Lee Hill. Whew, man, that was annoying. Anyway, so, uh, just take York. Almost there anyway. Now this road, uh, does become a lot more fun when you get through, I guess, Timonium. <laughs> a lot more fun, but we're going to take it here to take it to the reservoir. I think this is the right road. Padonia. Not sure. We're not, knowing me. I think it was in, like the next road up or something like that. I have no fucking idea. I'm sure it wasn't this road, because I can't, I can't possibly got on the right road. Oops. Nice red light. I think you have to go to, to uh, the next one or something like that. Anyway, so let me get back on the right road. And it just started to rain. <laughs> so we'll see how deadly this gets. 
is not a good road to be riding on when it's wet. As they say, slippery when wet. We will be taking it very easy. This bike just spits me off like you wouldn't believe it. Boom, boom, boom. Of course it's fucking wet. Let this guy come out from behind me. Ugh. Ah, shit, he followed me. Unbelievable. <laughs> Trying to do people a favor. The next thing you know, they're following you around. Fuck. Maggot. Next thing you know, he's right behind you. Alright, now this. Because I'm saying, in a car, you wouldn't be worried hardly at all. I see some people literally don't worry at shit if it's raining when they drive. On a bike, you cannot ignore the fact that the road is wet. It's that simple. Especially when it just begins to rain, because then you will find your front wheel doing all kinds of skish, skittish things. Just when you need it to not do skittish things. So we are riding to the east side of the clouds, which is usually where it rains. A few rains on the east side of them, heading east. You can see some serious water right there. Uh, I guarantee this is going to be slippery. Oof. Two decided not to even cross the road. They're like, fuck it, let's go back the other way. All right, so this is like a giant uh, bike, biker, hiker hangout right here, this thing. Man, I tell you, why is it that like every time I come out on this bike, I get caught in the rain? And I don't ride when the weather is perfect. I, I just seem to only want to ride on Sundays. And when I want to ride, it rains. It's a rule. All right, so hopefully we won't outrun this rain. Doesn't seem to be too bad anyway. It's picking up a little bit, there's no question. Ugh, not enough to get wet though. It's just enough to be sliding off the road into telephone poles. Not careful. Bike's got 200 horsepower, man. You're out of riding around in the rain without a rain mode. What's up, man? Yep, sure does. Now, anybody with any sense would just turn around and ride back to the way, but not me. I'm going to try to outride the rain to where it is clear up there. See what's clear up there? That's where we want to go anyway. We want to go north or west. We're north and east. And camera's still attached. I pull over and let these cars pass. We have switch stop already. Not too bad. East 145. There's had a couple of courses up here that I play. Major thing is I think you gotta come over this hill here and there's a couple of turns. Just turn right there. Always gotta worry about these surprise turns. Nice course here. This bike definitely slides around more than my old bike does. There's no question about it, or did. And uh, the good thing about it is it slides um, fairly tame. One of, the, one of the wheels will slide, but the bike as a whole doesn't really get going. And um, 
just has this occasional moment where it goes whoop, whoop. With the, when the front wheel, when it, when it just starts getting, when the tires just get wet, there's an occasional moment of slight skittishness, but it really is, hasn't got yet into like a full-blown slide on me. My old bike with the Metzlers wouldn't have had a problem with it, and this bike has Pirelli's, has a Super Corsa SPs on it. Uh, and they don't seem to be quite as eager to see rain as those Metzlers did, or even the older Pirelli's, the Road Demons. Sport Demons, like a generic tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paper mill. Somebody right behind me. We're doing a steady 40, so it's not like we're going too slow. All right, so let's save this for a while. We got a long way to go. Here we go, 146. Pretty much straight out to uh, Red Lion. This will take you through the, uh, what shall we call it, the, uh, the reservoir, Lock Raven Reservoir, I think it is. So, quick blast out there, we'll be there in a minute. Runs out straight out to where I'm trying to go, which is a place called like the Pleasant Valley or Pleasant, yeah, I think it's Pleasant Valley uh, Park. And when we get there, we'll get to the fork in the road, and then things will start to get really interesting. But for now, we're just going to kind of blast along. Hope we don't run in any more rain, more gravel. Just kind of relaxing and have a little fun. Meow. Meow. Like, you know, Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, just cruise along, kick along. I'm, I, my thing is, once you get away from the, the big cities like Baltimore, D.C., Philadelphia, you know, New York, you, you run into a lot of these just back roads, you know, and it, you don't really have to do a lot of ride to get, but you just, but you got to get out of the city. And the thing is, if you're smart, this is the kind of road you ride on on a bike. However, it is slow. There's no question it is way slower to do this than to ride on um, 95. No question about it. No, no doubt. And once you start putting uh, stoplights and turn signals and shit like that in there, it really slows you down. But this is, a, this is a, the kind of ride I really enjoy riding. I really enjoy this kind of ride. And then, you know, yeah, it's a big question of, you know, do you want to throw away the power of a leader bike? And, and really, I don't even think leader bikes are powerful enough, in my opinion. I think if you've got to go, if you've got to go over half of the red line when you're riding a bike to enjoy it, it just doesn't make enough power. And I'm pulling 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 RPMs on, my, on this bike, just cruising along. You know, if I had to kick it up to eight, nine, just to enjoy riding it, I'd be in trouble. So I really don't want to get a small bike that's too small because it's just, it's just not fun. It's not, and I know people say, well, you don't need to do blah, 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 blah. You don't need blah, 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 you know, whatever, dude. It's not fun. And that's all there is to it. I don't enjoy riding a bike that doesn't make decent power. That's all there is to it. All right, so the dudes guys are looking at me like I'm nuts, because I am riding into the rain. How many times have I been caught in this rain riding up here? I cannot tell you. Just about every time I come up here, I get caught in the rain. But I love it. I, 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 this, I love riding like this. To me, this is what riding a bike is all about. And I, and I know people talk about twisties and all this kind of shit. The twisties to me are irritating, annoying, and dangerous. And if you like making the turns left, right, left, right, back, forth, up, doesn't that get nauseous? <laughs> Seriously. 
doesn't that get nauseous? Now people can talk about, oh, you just like riding fast and straight line. You just do it. Dude, I'm sorry, but since when is riding a powerful motorcycle a bad thing? Seriously! A low gear roll on, a high gear roll on. From three to 5,000 RPM, next thing you know, you're doing quite a fast speed. Just, just like that, weep. That was fifth gear. Fifth gear from third to five, from 3,000 to 5,000 RPM. Look it up. You know, when did that become a bad thing? While spinning your wheels back and forth through twisties became a good thing? Why? It's the same risk. Why, yes, there, I'm going faster than you would be in the twisties, probably. Hopefully. Hopefully. But yes, if you hit a tree, and I hit a tree, we're both dead. <laughs> as hard as do it. And, and don't think that's not the case. This dumbass texting. I'd like to think about going for a trip in the corn before I hit a tree. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm gonna say this, and just we'll just end it on this note. The reason that people make bikes and cars that get shitty gas mileage is because they're a lot of fun to ride despite the fact that they get shitty gas mileage and oh well, you have to have enough money to afford it. Okay, life, deal. I saw the merge I took before, not a problem. It was actually pretty easy, the only hard part was really finding, uh, I, I think we missed the reservoir to the north. I really was kind of looking forward to it. Whoops. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so I'm seeing a little uh, fog here. Now I'm down to one, oh, fire, okay. Down to one bar. God, I hate when people do shit like that. Down to one bar on my tank. Uh, which I've been at it a while, but this is, this is the money shot uh, down here, folks, okay? Uh, this is basically why I came up here. So let me stop this and we'll record a little bit later. Right in front of me. <laughs> Look, that's only doing 45. Uh, I'm gonna run that blind turn and pull right out. All right, so um, in any case, we're almost there. Hopefully I'm not down like the last two minutes of recording time. Things are about to get a lot more fun, let's put it that way. So we're heading, we're about uh, 20 miles out from Baltimore. We're on Jarrettsville Road 146. Pretty straightforward, 142, 143 turned into 146, just stayed on it. And the only thing I'm upset about is I missed the reservoir. It's not a big deal, I mean, where we went and we passed all those bikes was sort of like the northern tip of it. Uh, so here are the roads, you know, I'm, I'm going well over the speed limit here. Roads are nice, nice, you know, anybody can ride these roads, should be able to ride these roads at a reasonable speed without worrying about killing themselves. You just gotta worry about people popping out. Really a big deal. And there's one other thing you gotta worry about, which I'll get to in a minute. And uh, when I get, I start to rain again, but that's another thing. Uh, I hate to turn my camera off now, but we're about three or four miles from where I want to be. So let me, let me turn it on when I start to see. Ah, shit, let's see. I need another 20 minutes of video right here. Just a light drip pit of rain, nothing more. 
What did, what did that, how did that song go? Out in the cornfields where the woods got high. Something like that. Work on my night moves. This is, this is the kind of place where riding conservatively means you're only doing twice the speed limit. <laughs> Remember this. Okay, so now, now we start to hit this downhill section. Go down into the little thing. Get it around there, buddy. <laughs> Alright, now things... This is where the track and the street combine. Let's put it that way. Okay. This is where you got to be careful not to come crooked into these turns and then find out there's some just nasty shit behind the turn. I remember this. Ugh. <laughs> I remember that one, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's one thing that riding up here is famous for. You come to these turns, look at that shit, right out in front of me. <laughs> Woo! Couldn't have predicted it better. That is the fourth time at least that that's happened to me today. Just popped right out in front of me. I'm telling you, buddy, you gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. At least expect it, expect it. Can't come flying over these blind hills because it's just all kinds of disaster waiting for you on the backside of these hills. I kid you not. I still have to go back and record some video. You see that tree right there is missing some bark? <laughs> Guess how that tree got to be missing some bark. Um, I still have to come back and record some video over these parts where um, it, obviously somebody ran up. I saw one where someone ran off the road and there was a fire. I was right on 17 yesterday. Ugh, ugh. Sport bike on gravel road downhill. Genius at work. Is that like an I a haiku? Is that what they call it? Is that Japanese for IQ less? <laughs> All right, so. Now, this is where I would really want to have more like a 600. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, you're not kidding me. All right, we're, we're nowhere near the border yet, okay? We're about uh, 15, well, 20, something like that. We're a ways away from the border. This is just one of those back creek kind of things. Now, what I did, and I'm going to have to record it, and what I did was uh, I drove down here the other day, stopped, down by this fucking mosquito infested creek park and uh, I was sitting out here taking a couple pictures and this old guy I believe he's kind of 50, 60 years old you know, 60 years old guy on this uh, gold wing came by with his girlfriend in the back his wife, whatever it's kind of tootled up this hill. <laughs> now it's kind of tootled up here. I was like, God damn. I said, I have to try that. <laughs> On my bike. And like most things, it seemed worse in my car than it actually was on my bike. The gravel is not as loose as I thought it would be. On my, it was actually scarier in my car 
to ride on this than it is right now on my bike. Because it, it isn't like gravel. It's like, it's a gravel on top of asphalt. So there's, there's a layer of asphalt under there. But yeah, we don't, we don't want to get over into the, into the gravel and then have trouble. But there's, there seems to be parts where the gravel is clear that we can ride on reasonably easily. And I gotta tell you, I was shitting about this all week. I said, this is the stupidest idea I've ever had in my life. I am bound to wreck my motorcycle, but I have to do it. <laughs> I have to do it. I have to. I can't let this old guy at a gold wing chump me out. I have to do it. And I'm not gonna lie, some parts of this are pretty fucking heinous. So we will be going much slower than this in some parts. And one thing, another thing you gotta watch out for is these guys in trucks that apparently like to come barreling, you know, barreling down here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. And this is an easy part. Barreling down here at 100 miles an hour. I gotta tell you, this is among the stupidest things I've ever done in my life. But we're almost, almost done. We're, I think we're about a third of the way done. Let's see if I can keep my speed down. Now you're riding your ADV bike and all this kind of stuff laughing or you're whatever laughing. Look at this fucking guy, you can't even ride down a gravel road. Oh. Say this bike is not exactly going straight. I'm having it right off the side of it, okay? That was like an aim fire kind of thing right there. I think it gets a little bit worse than this up here. This is fucking scary as shit. Well, we're gonna tiptoe down, at least until we can point it and release the trigger. Oh, shit. Dash. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck. And the other reason I wanted to do this is because my GPS has sent me on a couple of back roads. Like, this is, this is the worst, okay, clearly. But, um... I've taken some rides out in the Shenandoah where it's put me on some roads, some gravel roads like this. It's starting to rain too on top of that. Oh, see that cloud up there? Alright, so we're almost done. My eyes are starting to dry out. Sorry, but we're going down here as slow as possible. I think there's a creek here at the bottom. where it makes a sharp turn at the end of the road, and that's it. Eyes watering. I can barely see. Ugh. Now, just imagine somebody coming up this hill. I'm riding the brakes, both brakes. i to keep my speed down. If somebody comes over that turn, we're fucking flattened. I'm trying to stay in the high side of this gravel. Man, shit. Whew. But it can be done. It can be done. And that, that, that was the worst one I've seen uh, out of all the time I've been out riding, the GPS riding. This was the worst one. Oh, this is some serious gravel here. Power steer. I got my riding with Tom skills. <laughs> So, Baron, why haven't you gone GS? Why haven't you gone green roading on your GS? Uh, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna climb that hill. Now I think we're at the border. This is pretty close. Ugh. 
It's like skiing. You can't try to stop. You know, you can't control your speed too much. You kind of just want to, you know, you just want to get over it. It's like riding on fucking uh, graded roads. Here we go. Now we're out. Okay. The problem is we're going to go and take that road too. I think that one's a little bit worse than this one. Okay, so this is Carrera. This is Carrera in 136 Maryland, and that goes northwest. And I think the border is here somewhere. Let me do this one more time. Whoo, man. I was scary as piss. I, get, I, I mean, I don't ride on gravel a lot, man, I'll tell you. Uh, oh, what a, what a relief. <laughs> Riding on gravel is easy until you want to stop or turn. Then it becomes tricky. So you got to really kind of manage your speed. And I'm not an expert at it by any shot, any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and the other thing is, I, you know, it just seems really easy over here on the side to get pushed off the road to the side. Behind me laughing her ass off. But yeah, on these on these roads, sure, a 600 would probably be fine. So I, I still say no matter what, if you ride a 600, you give up the ability to, inst to instantaneously accelerate at whatever speed you want. Um, that's all there's to it. I mean, it's it's certainly fast enough to get you where you want to go. But you lose the ability to, you know, 3,000 RPM. Do shit like that. <laughs> Crapple road. All right, let's see what's like coming down. Not too bad. This bike just does not want to go straight. It's kind of aggravating. You have to constantly have to turn it back to the left and really sensitive to the hills uh, there is our cars we're gonna slow down here because we don't want to fall into the ditch Ugh. taking the word sport tour literally <laughs> that guy's like I don't think he's gonna make it <laughs> better slow down I don't know if there's a hill on one of these, but it's kind of fun. Oh, are we back on road? No, not quite. Almost. Almost. All right, so that was fun. <laughs> Do not want to end up in the goddamn weeds. That's all I got to say. Oh, fuck. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I was measuring that, that clear spot. That sucked the bill right in front of that guy. And yeah, the bars in this bike are high enough and wide enough where I can ride it kind of like a dirt bike. And I like right down next to the fucking, uh, you know, I do have some room, some leverage. In a car, you would even be, you would even be sweating this. You would even be thinking about it, like just rolling along. All right, so that was, that was the, the main agenda of this trip right there. to make it up that section of road with gravel. Now the secondary agenda is to enjoy these back roads coming back home.
We're out here in these small towns. I'm just gonna let this thing run. Get an idea of what it's like to ride out here. Oh shit. Like every time I see gravel, I have to hop to the left side of the bike because it wants to go right badly. Ugh. 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 All right. Ugh. And we are, whoops. Clear that side yet. Okay. Oh, I hit it when I don't check right. All right. All right, so we ride out here. Gotta check both sides before you cross the street, buddy. From here, it's pretty much straightforward. You just ride around. Except that right around these cornfields is a lot of fun. That's the thing. Had a blast out here last time just driving around. I was doing 45 on the nose to pass him. <laughs> but there's there's another thing you want to watch out for is going around corners, seeing cars, and going shit. I have to change my line or something stupid like that. Because you're too far to the center. But yeah man, this is this to me is what riding a bike is all about. Out here in the middle of nowhere. I really don't like riding on the highway. I just, it's, it's a necessary evil. I, I just don't like it unless this is your idea of a highway. He was chicken. Yeah. in front of the house, marching around. If your idea of riding a motorcycle is, you know, banking left, bank right, drag knee, drag knee, whatever, you know, you're, you know, just crazy, man. That's, that's just asking, you should have enough evidence of it already. It's just asking to get killed. And you say, well, we're out in the middle of nowhere, we don't have to worry about cars pulling out in front of us. I said, yeah, sure. You never have to worry about a car pulling out in front of you. You can always ride like a jackass. Sure. <laughs> right. Never have to worry about gravel. Sure. Whatever you say, though. My opinion, you always have to worry about gravel and cars. Always. And on the East Coast rain. And sure enough, Guess what? Starting to rain. See, I don't have my, UP, my GPS to tell me which way to go now. And I have it, but my ear pieces are fucked up, so I didn't use them. I just remember staying on this and pretty much until it ran out. It's not raining too bad. We're heading back up into the rain, which is not good. So we're gonna try to get north of it and then come around the backside. I remember this turn. <laughs> Alright, those patches have gravel in them. <laughs> remember that. Gadget build community of Christ. Another party. Church. Gathering. That's Satan! <laughs> That's Satan on two wheels! He's come here to demonize you, take your soul!
it's wet. Sunday. Solid bar has not started flashing yet, so we're in good shape. Plus, when it does start flashing, I've noticed I can pull here and go speak of the devil. A little twist of the uh, wrist there. Now we could be in a little trouble. Nee, 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 nee. We knew this when we came out, though. <laughs> Raining. Twisty roads. Middle of nowhere. No gas. It's all good. <laughs> Cat's got his canoe and his ATV. Now you get to watch me wreck <laughs> in the rain. Holy shit, man, we're not lying. This is starting to get wet. Doesn't look bad. See, this is the thing about rain, man. You don't need a solid cover and thick clouds and all that You just need, like, be in the wrong part of it. The wrong time. Just like that, stops raining. Ugh, ugh. Out in the cornfields where the woods got heavy. Out in the backseat of my 68 Chevy. Had no idea what we were doing, how long it was going to last. But that's okay. We made the best of it. <laughs> Working on our night moves. Woohoo! Try to use some awkward teenage moves. The darkness rolling in. Do 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 How crazy. Gotta ride the ride on this thing, gravel man. Whoa. A little bit too low in the first gear. Okay, second. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, out in the middle of nowhere. Dun, 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 dun. First time I've really ever been out riding this bike in the rain. And it, it does handle okay, so the key thing here is not to get overconfident. Jesus Christ, man, I get out of here and it starts to rain. What are the odds? <laughs> be fucking high. I hate videos shot by people who get stuck in the rain and then the, the lens is all wet and you can't see shit, all distorted. Down here to Mill Road. I remember this one. Ugh, I can stop there. Lube on my tires. I'm just taking it nice and easy. You can come down here and go a lot faster if you want to, trust me. I will be happy to correspond with you after you return. Thirty five hundred, just coasting down. Gently use on the brakes. I always say the thing about turns like this, you get halfway down them and it and it gets a lot worse than it was at the start. the shit out of the chain, but fuck it. So 
So yeah, it would be kind of cool to never have to worry about your front brake causing you to crash. Okay, but that assumes, of course, that the ABS is that good, where it, it actually does not cause you to crash. Let's see if we can get a fine Coke around here somewhere. Ugh. Mahapar Heritage Village. Hey there. I guess it's open. Really, we'd like to stop and get a Coke somewhere, but let's see if we can do this without getting killed. Ugh. Ugh. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? All righty. Uh, do you know if there's a place around here I can get a Coke, would you? Pardon? Would you know if there's a place around here I can get a Coke? Just a, like a convenience store? No, this is just a museum. Right? Here, yeah. Okay. I'm, no, I'm sorry. If, if you keep going on this road, uh -huh. you'll probably come to a, like a restaurant over on 70, Route 74. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a little distance. That's yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, so we'll go up here, a little seventy-four. It's a museum. Thank you. It'll become popular on YouTube. Ugh. So all over the state of Pennsylvania, when you get next to these railroad tracks, you see a lot of these roads like this, man. A little squirrel spill. Try doing that on a 600, see how it works. I mean, that's the other thing. I, it's 4,000 RPM, 5,000 RPM. I'm not even, I haven't even gotten to 5,000 RPM. I'm still... 4,000 RPM in third or something like that. That was fourth. You know, it's just crazy. How much faster these things are than 600s. power. Easy, easy, easy power. All right, we'll go to Red Lion. If I can make it. And then turn around and come back. No, you do that at 3,500 RPM and suddenly you're doing 55 miles an hour. It's like, man, how can you think of going to a bike that has less power? I'm not even close to the power band on this bike. Right in the power band? Sure, here's 4,000. Quarter throttle. Just gone. I'm serious. It's not even close to 600 power. Just like an entire different dimension of speed. This bike would absolutely fucking embarrass the 600. Of course, of course, it would have to be, you know, pulling close. I'd have to really ride it fast to embarrass some 600s. And at that point, you know, yeah, you're like, okay, I, I never really want to ride it that fast. So I think that's where your upper limit is. It's, it's not that the bike is, has too much power. It's more that you just, you just aren't crazy enough to ride it, to use it all. 
on, on the road most of the time. Now, if I was on the highway, merging on the highway or something like that, yeah, not, not on some back road, I'm not going to out here third gear dropping 6,000, 7,000 RPM. We still don't have any gas, so we've got to get gas somewhere, somehow, before we start having to push it. Alright, so that's why, that's where I turned the last time, I think. No. No, we got to this creek up here somewhere. Just an entirely different dimension of power than these slower bikes. 4,000 RPM, crack the throttle open and, you know, boom, it is gone. I won't say you, you just have to crack the throttle. What I say is you get a much more, a much better proportion of power as you turn the throttle. You don't have to worry about turning the throttle all the way or, you know, hitting it you know, really hard. You just kind of ease the throttle open. The bike eases out, you know, the next thing you know, you're doing 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so shit like that. And it's just so different. If I wanted to pass this truck, I could, but I, by the time I got past him, I'd be doing about 80 going into that turn right there. It's not something I want to do. Anyway, so that's pretty much that. Let's, let's see if we can get to a red line and get back. This is going to last, but let me at least record the route. So the thing is to come off York Road, uh, well, let's see, come off uh, 29 North, past 100, it dead ends into 99, which is Old Frederick Road, take like Westfall Lane or something, which is, turns into Old Court. Old Court, take that into Towson or Timonium or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I guess it's Towson downtown. And then, um, then take York Road out, or you can keep going to, um, 146, which is Delaney, I think. Uh, either way, um, come off York, and you take, uh, oh, is this open? You come off York, and you take 143 uh, east to 146. Is that open? Are they open? Genius. Oops. Yeah. All right. That's just, that's that's a post office. Okay, very good. One forty-six. Uh, took that down to the park. Stayed on uh, um, Madonna Road. Took that all the way down to the Pleasant Valley Park or Hidden Valley Park, whatever it is. Take the left fork. Goes up through those uh, gravel roads. Stay on that road all the way until you get to that uh, four-way intersection and take the back right road straight out to here. This is South 74 in, in, um, in uh, Southern Pennsylvania. And 74 runs left to Red Line and right. I have no idea the Delta. Little turn there, got some gas. Just gonna let it run. Got my GPS lined up. And we're gonna see if we can navigate back by GPS, my earphone. So we're just gonna run the video here. See 
see how long it runs. So yeah, the question becomes now, you know, what what size bike do you need? What size bike do you really need to enjoy riding? I think it's not a question of what size bike do you need to ride. It's a question of what size bike do you need to enjoy riding it. There's, there's just not enough enjoyment and, and there's too much hassle to be dealing with a bike that you don't enjoy riding. Doesn't matter what kind of bike you have, you need to enjoy it, otherwise it's a pain in the ass. Um, this thing's not quite loud enough, but... Uh, I, I'd still say you need a bike that's got enough power. Maybe you don't need a Panigale 1299, but you certainly need something that's got enough pump. And for me, I, I think I could enjoy riding a 600, but I'd rather ride a 750 or an 800 or 900 or a liter bike or this one. And I think that's what it really comes down to is I can use the power in this bike a lot more than I can use the quick turning ability of a 600 or, you know, not to mention a 300, you know, certainly. I mean, I don't need a bike that, that can go back and forth around this road like a ping pong ball. So I think, I think a 600 or 750, 600 would be the, in my opinion, absolute minimum for anyone. I really I really just don't think that 300s are really good for anything. They're really good for anything more than just carving up a lot of miles. You know, and um if I had to ride 2000 miles, I'd want something that could get 50, 60, 70 miles a gallon. And um knowing that an FC7 could get 55 miles a gallon, I would certainly take that over any of the 300s or 400s on the market, you know, even a KTM. I really don't like the, the power band on, this, on the FC7, but it's more r rational than the power band on the, the, R the RC390, the Duke 390, which is adequate. All right, so the second half of the Ride of Perfection, which I um, unfortunately did not have enough power to record, um, which may end up leading me to buy another battery for my uh, camera, was to ride back from Brogue down to uh, Route 70, essentially inter Interstate 70, going towards Frederick. Now, as much as I talked and recorded all this stuff that I recorded on the way out to Brogue, the ride back across uh, Pretty Boy Reservoir and so forth uh, was twice as good as the ride out to Brogue. And I enjoyed the ride out to Brogue <laughs> a fair amount. The ride back was much better than the ride out there. Unfortunately, I didn't have the recording to do that. So I'm having to show you some shots from Google view, um, of some of the scenes and sure they look like, you know, mundane scenes and so forth. The road was extremely cool. It was, it was a lot of vertical, a lot of up and down, a lot of turns and stuff. It, it was a good 600 type road. You know, you, if you're riding a 600, you didn't enjoy it. You might even enjoy it if you're riding a, a 250 or 300 or something like that. I had no problem riding it, my 1200 on it and enjoyed it. It was a cool, it was a kind of road where I think just about anybody would enjoy riding a motorcycle on it. It wasn't really fast. Wasn't super dangerous, wasn't easy, wasn't wide open, wasn't just straight road. It was, it was cool. It was a very cool road. Um, and I think in this case, it was a case 
of that part of the state has been developed, you know, Baltimore, whatever, um, for so long, these back roads out in these farms are horse and buggy roads to some extent. And when they were paid up and all that, they, they weren't like graded flat and wide open. Like most roads are now and like roads tend to get when they get a lot of traffic. And, and, you know, I, I set the GPS on shortest route, picked a couple of spots, um, look for some crossings over the, uh, over the, um, the, uh, reservoir, put those in as, as waypoints. And it gave me a great route. And, I, and it's one thing I'm, I'm loving about this GPS. It tends to do that pretty reliably. As long as I pick the shortest point between two points, pick the starting and end points roughly where I want to go, you know, like, uh, Woodbridge to, uh, um, Martinsburg, for instance, or something like that. Right. Which is, you know, a good hundred miles. Um, it will find these back roads and all this kind of twisty stuff out there. And, and most of them will be pretty cool rides. You know, I, I've, I've rarely, if ever had a bad ride like that or a bad drive, even, you know, it doesn't tend to pick these small local neighborhood roads 